It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. And I am up in Claremont, California today. I had a consultation in Glendora, so wanted to stop by to see my son, daughter-in-law, and succulent baby, Lucy. Many of you remember this gorgeous succulent tapestry that we installed uh, for our son, daughter-in-law, and Lucy. It's been about five and a half, six months since this went in. So it went through a Claremont summer it went through a really dry fall, it went through some rains, and here we are now at the, about in the middle of January, and look how spectacular it looks. We have the Aeonium uh, Sunburst that last time I came up here and took a look, they were looking a little rough, but these are a winter, uh, winter active plant, and they are at their absolute best. I'm so pleased. Look at this Euphorbia Millii Ready Red too. Ready reds, uh, the euphorbias are a little touchy, so I wasn't sure how they do here, but this one is looking great. And look at how this Calanchoe orgialis and these crassulas or the cotyledon is framing out this ray of light. I'm new to these agave ray of lights. I haven't used them for very long. I'm really, really excited to see how these mature. They're so diminutive compared to their cousins, the agave foxtails. The jaguar, um, wow, that's looking like it's, yep, it's pupped right there. So this man, agave jaguar, is going to really own this in here. We planted, you can see a little aloe distans right there. And as with really intricate tapestries, nobody bats a thousand. Some of the plants, you know, didn't make it. Others get eaten up by those around them. Don't hesitate. If something doesn't look good anymore, or it's being eaten, to rip it up and move it. You can do that anytime. Always feel free to come through and manipulate and move your plants around. This Calanchoe Lucier has bolted. I'm sure many of yours have bolted too, but it's just started to bolt. The flowers have barely even opened, so I'm not going to cut this now. But when it is all done, when the flowers are dead and the bees are bored, go ahead and cut it down at the base of the plant, and there should be pups underneath for you to uh, if, that'll fill in around around the cut mom. Um, the out uh, the aloe ferox this is going to get really really big and it looks like it might have a little bit of aloe mite i can see a little bit right here that could be an issue so we're going to spray that with some um, systemic bare tree and shrub just to nip that in the bud remember if you have aloe mite it's not your fault it's airborne all of the aeoniums, the kiwis look great. This Echeveria Sahara, it's getting too wet. And you can see some of these under leaves are just, just kind of rotten and soggy. Um, but the plant itself is fine. And the reason I know that is because I'm looking at the new growth. And the new growth is very turgid. There's no issue. Um, this is just the done, tired under leaves. It's not a big deal. And look, it's starting to pup too. This looks like it's going to be ultimately really, really happy in this spot. You can also adjust your irrigation in the wintertime if you do have rains. It's just so rare in California that we get any that we tend not to make a big deal out of it when it does happen. This ray of light is even bigger than the one we looked at over at the end of the corner. And you can see back there a milii that's got some yellow leaves that's not nearly as happy as its neighbor. So that one might end up dying on me. But I think that the other milii's, the paddle plant, and that Euphorbia trigona in the middle will probably take over to the point where it won't matter so much. I underplanted um, this Yucca rostrata really heavily with some crassula and some aloes uh, with that in mind that if we did have any losses that we'd be able to harvest some plants from other areas and tuck into some empty spots. Here we lost something which is okay so this is an example you know you can pull rock in you know if you don't want to put a plant down you can just cover the dirt with rock or you can pop off a cutting from pretty much anything in here and stick it there. I also am really happy to see that the Portolacaria afra 
um, unlike its cousin, the Varigata, it doesn't grow as fast. So if you're looking for a Portolocaria that's got a little slower growth habit, this might be the one to go with. Our Crassula undulata looks absolutely fantastic against this Ruchia. What a neat combo that is. And this is going to get some really beautiful pink flowers on it pretty soon, and that'll be a really neat contrast. Fun to see. Look at this Aeonium Sunburst. Wow, wow, wow. And I cannot believe the leaves on this Lucier. They are huge. I mean, there's my hand if you want to get a sense of it. So big. And our our agave blue glow see this white that's just sunburn it just got hammered a little bit in the summer that is strictly cosmetic it's no big deal in time those leaves will will come off anyway uh, so don't worry if you see a little bit of sunburn on the leaves of your plant the interestingly enough the aloe blue elf here up up here in claremont is just getting ready to bloom see it's just setting bud where the ones down in san diego are already done that's pretty interesting. And then over here, this is kind of a wet spot. You know, we've got all of the water dripping from the fountain. So we did have some Graptivaria. I think those were, I think those were Graptivarias. I think these were Fred Ives that rotted. See there, there, there. I need, I need to put something else here. And over here, the Millii too are struggling. They're not dead, so I'm hopeful that they're going to come out of it. But it looks like this one might have rotted a little bit as well. But not a big deal. Nobody bats a thousand. It's important to learn your microclimate by just planting things and seeing how they do. This aloe cameronii that I planted, remember I made such a big deal out of planting it as a cutting because I wanted it to stay red. So let's see. Oh, yep, look, still cutting. This has been sitting here for five months. <laughs> Wait, maybe not. Didn't I cut it once, John? I think when I came up here, I might have, I might have, it might have started to root and I cut it. So maybe not for five months, but I'm really happy to say that it's been at least three and it's still not doing anything, which is what I want. I don't want it to do anything. I like it red. I don't want it to turn green and I don't want it to grow. I just want it to stay just like it is. So yeah, I just set it there on the ground. And as the temperatures drop here in Claremont overnight, it should turn more and more red as it stresses more and more. Oh, God. Look at this Sahara. Wow. I mean, that is huge and so, so stunning. Yeah, I'm just... Uh, I'm just really, really thrilled with this garden and how it's maturing and looking. And I... I've been up to see it about three times and I've never really had to do much of anything to it. And now it might take me five or 10 minutes to just move some things around. So remember, don't hesitate to move things around in your garden. Sometimes, I mean, in this, in this bed alone, there's probably five or six microclimates at work. Maybe something down there would be happier over here, or maybe something over here would be happier down there. Remember, with succulents, unlike oak trees, we can just move them around. So get out in your gardens, and if something's a little unhappy, try moving it to another spot in the bed and see if it doesn't improve. Areas where you've lost plants, just pop in a cutting or something new. And, you know, most of all, just get outside and have fun and enjoy. Thank you so much for following, for watching this video, for sharing my videos with your friends. I, the lady that I met with in Glendora was turned on to my videos by her ex-husband. So, hey, you know, all paths lead. Uh, so I thank you all so much. Have a great day. This has been Laura in Claremont with your succulent tip of the day. Bye guys.